So her brothers and sisters, who were like seven and eight, they said, okay, go on, I dare you. So she got the pitchfork and stuck it through her foot. A monkey holding her baby saw her, so it jumped through the window, grabbed the banana and dropped its baby in the bus. So one day she was looking out the window daydreaming and she saw a small green man wearing a green suit. The green man turned around, waved at her and then skipped off. Children's Books Ireland have been sending out um, storytellers into schools all over the country and I've been lucky enough to be sent down to Galway. I'm down in Galway Educate Together National School. What I want you to do is I want you to pretend you're a really old person who was actually about 10 Over um, six sessions um, I've been working with six class with their wonderful teacher Barry and we've been developing stories, we've been practicing storytelling, we've been doing a real range of activities both around 1916 and what happened in Galway, but also stories from their own backgrounds, from their own families, and we've come up with this extraordinary range of stories. When my granny was a child, she lived in Germany. She had two sisters and three brothers, but they had to live in orphanages because their parents didn't have enough money to cope with that many children. But then one day, the parents came along and put them all on a boat to Ireland, which took them about a year because they kept on stopping off at different countries. When they finally got to Ireland, they were really, really poor. They lived in a one-room cottage and sometimes sat down to dinner with no more than a few raisins and a sugar cube. They sometimes spent days without eating. My great-uncle uh, was in the Sahara Desert in 1960. He was drilling for oil. Um, he, he needed water while he was there, so he went uh, looking for it. And when he found a lone bush, he knew that the roots would lead him to water. Um, before he went digging, he, he spotted weird, strange uh, shapes in the sand and went over to check. He, he discovered five bodies that seemed to be sleeping, but uh, they were actually dead. Um, they were in full army force, um, air force uh, gear, and they were dead for 17 years. Um, uh, the, one of them had a diary in its pocket, and it read that they were looking for water for five days and um, they walked 85 miles trying to look for water. We had great fun actually because we kind of went in and we talked a lot about storytelling and how, why do we do, why do we storytell? Do you know we story, tell stories for entertainment, for information, for historical reasons, but we also looked at how storytelling was the first form of literature in a sense and how people passed on their family histories, their um, their histories, in fact. We both realised fairly quickly that we were going to try and take as much from the children's experience and their own personal background as possible. So when we started, um, well, we started with a few language games, oral language games, like that sort of thing, and then talked about their own lives and their own personal stories. And I suppose we felt that at some stage we would lead it into the 1916 Rising and talk about the 1916 Rising and what they, they themselves had learned about it in school. And from that point then on, to try and focus in on the 1916 Rising here in Galway. They said to her, is there anyone here who was in the rebellion? She shook her head. They, and they walked over to where her son was lying in bed. He was sick, he had TB. And they whipped off the covers and dragged him out of the house, shouting at him, pinning him up against the wall. And two minutes later, their, her husband came walking along the path and they turned around to him and grabbed him and held him up at the wall too. Then there was a wham and she, she was, had come out of the house and whacked them across the face with her frying pan. So Sean wanted Ireland to be free from British rule so he joined the Irish volunteers when they heard they were having a rising. Now he never partook in the rising because the British captured him because they thought that he was a high valued member of the IRB. So they found him and they captured him. They took him to an interrogation room and they wanted answers. Of course, Sean had no answers because he wasn't in the IRB, but that didn't stop the British. They started beating him up using torture techniques. Nothing worked, so they just threw him in a cell. You know, we talked about things like the Arabian Nights, Thousand One Nights, and we looked at Scheherazade and why she was telling stories. So that was a big thing. But we also looked at how stories change when they're told by people. Um, so, we, you know, you're in a sense you're looking at oral history as well. Uh, 
uh, after my dad was coming home from school, he found this stone, like this smooth, like green really smooth stone, and he ran over and researched it to stone was. And then he showed his mom, um, his, his mom the stone. His mom got the stone, so she she kept it as an antique. It was in Beijing. Um, my mom was nine years old. Um, she was in the apartment with her two sisters and uh, her grandma and her grandpa. So um, they were just in the apartment, but then suddenly there was an earthquake. Mine's about a girl called Tara, and she's always getting bullied about what she wears and how she looks. And then her mom thinks it's just fine that, like, it's just they're just joking with her. And then. Um, one day she was like, she, um, this, the mean girl called Kate, um, it was English class and then Kate, and then they had to go on projects and Kate went to, um, went to her, Tara thought that she was going um, to make fun of her, but then Kate actually came to ask her, can she be, can she be pairs? When they were going out with their boat, they went, uh, they went wrong at the wrong time and they went out and the tide went out when they were out there so they got stuck and it was hunting time for crocodiles so crocodiles came across the boat and they were banging against it checking it out and um, my dad had to stay up all night shooting in the water trying to scare the crocodiles away my granny told my mom when there was the noise of may jumps for now to mount mountain looks for children who were better naughty. So be good or or they will come and get you. We have stories from Kenya, from Congo, we have stories from the Aran Islands, we have absolutely extraordinary range of stories now. It's been a very exciting process. Просто боялся на поле, потому что я очень устала, и я кушала это мясо, что я был тоже это голодный. In Zweiten Weltkrieg lebte mein Großgroßvater, seine Schwester, seine Mutter und sein Großvater in was ist jetzt Polen und war dann Deutsch, Deutschland. They decided that they'd run away one night, and and her friend is called Louisa, and Louisa's little sister Rebecca said that if she couldn't go, then she'd tell tell them. So my story starts off with my great times for uncle who was a Victorian and he wanted a tiger skin rug. Uh, so he went on safari to find the tiger and when he did he tried to kill it except that his plan backfired and the tiger ended up killing him. <laughs> Thank you.